Hello, bonjour, bonjour, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's exciting webinar on studying in France with English Thought Program, brought to you by Campus France Indonesia. So at first, let me introduce myself. I am Hidayah, the person in charge of Campus France Medan, and I'll be your MC for today's session. So we are happy to have so many participants uh, joining us and registering for this session today from across Indonesia and beyond, I, I hope. And um, this session, we will learn more about the opportunities to, that await you from France world-class universities. So, uh, actually, we uh, received a lot of questions as Campus France from our social media, our websites, and as well as our contact on WhatsApp about how we can pursue higher education in France without needing to be fluent in French. Meaning to say that um, when we have only English um, certificate or English proficiency test or English proficiency test, do we... Uh, do we have the opportunity to study in France and do we have like scholarship that is offered by French institution? So today we will begin uh, the discussion about the English uh, thought programs, how to apply. And after that, is there any scholarships uh, and funding opportunities for international students? And of course, at the end of the station, there will be like question and answer uh, to answer all of the questions that you may have. And I'm also honored that I am accompanied by my colleagues from Campus France Indonesia here. So we have um, Gabriela Mas Agung from Campus France Surabaya and Campus France Jogja. And um, for Campus France Bandung and Campus France Jakarta, although they are not here today, but they, are, uh, they truly support us in this session today. And of course, our uh, beloved keynote speaker uh, for today's session, Ms. Uh, our Mademoiselle Chaima Nedad, uh, the coordinator of Campus France Indonesia. And she will be sharing the valuable insights into the French higher education system and the various opportunities available to Indonesian students, especially that are taught in English. So throughout the session, we encourage for all of you here. So this session will be, um, maybe I can say 100% in English. And throughout all of the session, uh, we encourage for all of you to be interactive. So don't hesitate to drop your questions in the chat box and we'll make sure that we can answer and we cover all of the questions during the Q&A session. So, Without the further ado, uh, I will invite our keynote speaker today, uh, Ms. Chai Mainaidat, to hand over the virtual stage and um, to explain and introduce and to answer all of the questions regarding English thought program in France. Hello, Chai Ma. Bonjour. Bonjour. Salamat sore, uh, c'est moi. Okay. Um, Thank you okay, so hello, Shema. The platform is yours. Please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, hi, everyone. So, before starting, I just would like to introduce myself. I'm Shema Ledad, and I work as the national coordinator of Campus France Indonesia. And today, I'm very happy to be able to, to present to you the several opportunities that you can have uh, by studying in France um and uh studying in english in france so first let me share with you my screen okay so now everyone should be able to see it okay so like uh, hidaya told you it's actually i'm gonna speak in english because unfortunately i can't speak indonesian yet uh, and if you have any question, please do not hesitate to drop it out uh, on the chat. So, study in French with English taught programs. So, before talking about the specific themes, I would like to give you some uh, reminders about Campus France. So, who is Campus France Indonesia? So, we've got several missions here. So, the first one is that we are an official information center for higher education in France, and we also take care of university cooperation. 
Uh, you have to know that Campus France is actually an institution which was founded by the French government, which its main task is to promote higher education uh, abroad. So we have more than 200 Campus France offices all over the world, and especially five in Indonesia, Jakarta, Bandung, Medan, Surabaya, and Jakarta. You will, uh, at the end uh, of this uh, PPT, you will find their, the contacts. So uh, one of our main mission is to assist in the application procedure to higher education institution and uh, to help students with the visa application process. So we're here like to, to help you from the beginning of your study project till the end, till you get your visa. And so please do not hesitate to contact us. And there is something that I really would like to highlight is that our services are free of charge. So you can easily book an appointment with us and you will not have to pay for it. You really have to keep that in mind. We're not an agent. We are like, we are a part of the French government. So we do not ask for money for our services. So now, why should you go to France? So there are several reasons. There are some that I would like to highlight. The first one is like best money for, um, for value. So maybe you're not very familiar with French education, but you need to know that the, the quality of higher education in France is guaranteed and controlled by official agencies. Like you can actually find it, uh, find out a lot of um, university and, and French university and school uh, on uh, international rankings such as Shanghai ranking. So, for example, Shanghai ranking, we have uh, we are like the third country represented in this ranking with twenty five universities and schools in total, uh, thirty five uh, French university and schools in QS ranking of two thousand twenty five, six French business schools in the top ten of uh, Financial Times ranking and uh, more than 50 universities and school in the um, Times Higher Education ranking of, two, of 2025. So it shows, it really shows the high quality uh, that France offer in higher education. Then uh, you also have to know that there is something that is very specific to France, I think, is that you can have numerous professional opportunities. So, you can have the education with top quality research laboratories, but you can also have internships. You need to know that in master's programs and bachelor's degree uh, programs, most of the time you have to, um, to do an internship or to have a work experience to validate uh, your diploma. So it's a very good asset, I think, for students, either they are French or from, uh, or from um, foreign countries. And of course, uh, in higher education, we have strong collaboration between academic institution and the industrial sector. So it's, it's easy for the students to find internships. Then for best money for value, of course, the tuition fees. So you will have to know that um, in France, you, the tuition fees are not that high. So, especially for the public universities. So, for example, if you want to do a bachelor's degree, you just have to pay like four, um, 49 million rupiah, which is around 2,800 euros per year, which is really not a lot uh, compared to other countries. And actually, the French government takes care up to 10,000 euros of the tuition fees per student, either you are French or from another country. So if you come to study in France, the French government will take care up to 10,000 euros for your studies, which is a very great thing to know. The second one is diverse scholarships available. So I'm not going to give you much details because I'm going to talk about it uh, a, little, a, a little later. But yeah, you have to know that we have all the scholarships available for students who would like to go to study in France. Then France is also a country of innovation and research. research. So more than 75 Nobel Prize were, um, were awarded to French researchers. More than 13 Fields Medals were also given to French people. So it really shows how France is, um, is very capable in innovation and research. In, and actually we're very known for uh, engineering in um, in aviation and this kind of thing. Yeah. So now 
let's talk about the main topic of today, program starts in English. So it's actually one of the reasons that you should go to France is that it's very easy to go there to study uh, a whole program starting in English. So you don't have to know France, uh, French, sorry. And uh, it's actually easy access for the international students. So we've got more than a hundred and seven, uh, uh, sorry, a thousand and seven hundred programs taught in English in France. And actually we've got a tool from Campus France, which is a Campus France catalog for um, programs taught in English. And so you can easily find uh, any master's degree or bachelor's degree or certificate or maybe uh, short programs uh, that are taught in English in France, and you will a you will be able through this tool to know what uh, field is um, is taught, it's taught, um, which from which university or from which school. So it's a very good one. So do not hesitate to take a picture of that, and I will actually show it later again. So. What type of programs uh, you can study in France in English? So you've got master's degree, of course. So like fully for two years, you can easily um, uh, attend, a master, uh, attend courses of a master's degree in English. Of course, undergraduate degrees. So like a three years, um, a three years bachelor's degree. And short courses and certificates that you may already know. So short courses and certificates, it's more... I think to have a professional, uh, more professional um, programs, I would say. It is important to note that the master's degree in France is two years, like in Indonesia, and undergraduate degrees is only three years and not four years. About the fields, like the popular field of study taught in English, so we've got several of them. The first one, of course, is business and management. And uh, it's very important to know, like I told you uh, earlier, we actually have uh, six schools that are in the top 10 of Financial Times ranking, which shows that those schools really give uh, high quality courses. And so we have HEC Paris, INSEAD, EDEC Business School, ESCP, EM Lyon, and uh, ESSEC. So all of them actually offers uh, courses in English, either it's bachelor's or master's degree. Then we of course have engineering and sciences. Um, so even though it's maybe more difficult uh, fields to study in, you can easily find a uh, program taught in English in this field. So we also, of course, have Institut Polytechnique de Paris, IMT Atlantique, IC Superhero, Super Centrale Supélec, Université Paris-Saclay, and, and more, more than that. But uh, here I'm just giving you some example and actually trying to give you like the, the best one, the one where the most, fa for most famous in the world for the high quality um, education. Then we have social sciences. So of course, Sciences Po, Science po Université Catholique de Lille, Aix-Marseille, HCC. So social sciences it will be more like political courses, uh, maybe psychology, uh, all languages too. So all those schools and even more can uh, provide you with a uh, program study in English in this in these fields. And once again, it's very high quality programs since it's from um, uh, from good university in France and schools too. And then of course we have arts and humanities. So there are uh, other examples such as Gobelin, École du Casse, L'École du Design. So for arts and humanities, it actually it's a little bit more, uh, let's say, professional uh, programs. Uh, let's say, for example, you want to master, um, uh, I don't know, the, the, the cuisine arts, then you can easily go to École du Casse and then uh, they provide like program study in English so you don't really have to know French to, to join the courses. So that's it for the popular fields of study taught in English. 
Now, the main part of this presentation um, is that uh, actually it will be easier for you if you take like English taught programs to get scholarships, especially the Indonesian scholarships, because to be able to get um, the Indonesian scholarship, you have to show that you will study a programs fully taught in English. So, for example, we've got Isma Ismavo with three French universities eligible to Isma um, to ISMA undergraduates, so only for the undergraduate programs, and actually it will be only one semester, but fully in English, and six French universities eligible to ISMA vocacy, which is more the professional, um, the pro yeah, the professional parts uh, of studies. So here are the um, institutions which are eligible to, to these scholarships. So we've got Sciences Po, Ex-Marseille University, and Université de Caen. For ISMA Vocacy, we have École de Design, ESB, École euh, Le Nôtre, Uni La Salle, Université Polytechnique, and Université de La Réunion. So once again, please do not hesitate like to take a picture, to go see the website of those, um, of those universities, see what programs in English they offered, see if you're interested about it or not. Then we, also, of course, have LPDP scholarships. So we've got LPDP regular, targeted and partial. So 70 French universities eligible to it. Then LPDP affirmacy, 23 universities, and LPDP Campus France, 27 French universities. So for your information, LPDP Campus France is actually uh, quite new and it is um, a cooperation signed between the French government and the Indonesian government to fund um, the studies in France of Indonesian students. So now we've got 27 French universities um, eligible to it. And uh, here below, you will find like the kind of programs that are eligible to this LPDP Campus France. So for example, Ecole Centrale de Nantes, you can like do a master in marine technology, hydrodynamics for ocean engineering. So you can see that it's very specific um, fields, and even though it's in French, you can like you can join it and um, and learn in English. So it's a very good thing to know. We've got fashion, cybersecurity, uh, economics, so nuclear engineering. So very many options, and it's only examples here. So if you want to know more about it, please do not hesitate to consult the LPGP website where you will be able to find all the, um, the list of all the programs. And then uh, the last one, it's uh, the common for scholarships. So now we have three French university eligible for 13 master's program in English related to data science, um, inter Intelligent Communication System, uh, II, Digital Security, Internet of Things, e-business, Track ar Architecture and Engineering, and Communication System. So once again, it offers you a pretty large um, field of study that you can choose and just go to France and study it in English. Now, so you may asking yourself how, like how can I know if this university uh, offer English taught in programs? So I'm gonna give you maybe three uh, tools that you can use or three advices that can really help you. I think the first one is uh, the one I mentioned earlier, Campus France catalog. Once again, please like take a picture of it and you will see it's very easy to use. You just have like to type maybe the name of, un of the university that you would like to study in, or maybe the field that you would like to study in. And then it will just show you all the master's degree, bachelor's degree certificates and short programs available in English in France. Check the university and school eligible to the following scholarships. So the one that I mentioned earlier too. Do not hesitate to visit the, the website. I'm sure that you're already quite familiar with LPDP, Cominfo, and Isma Ismavo, and you know how to find a list of university and school eligible. So please do not hesitate to do it because if a French school is eligible to one of these uh, scholarships, it means that the programs are fully taught in English. 
Then the third one is French university and schools website. So it's actually the, I think the easiest one and the one who will be the most up to date. So let's say, for example, you want to see uh, Université PSL, what kind of programs and track they, they teach in English. So you just have to, pa to, to type on, on in the internet, PSL, Université Paris, uh, programs taught in English. And then it will give you like the, the page of uh, the list of all the, the programs that are taught in English in this university. And actually it will be, yes, the most up-to-date information that you will be able to have about this uh, program taught in English. And same, like for Sorbonne University, you can do the same. And for actually most of the university, you can do it. But it can happen that some university do not give or some school do not have this kind of information on their website. If they do not have it, then the your reflex should be uh, to go to Campus France catalog and see if uh, those schools or universities have um, programs taught in English. Now, about the admission requirement for English taught um, programs. So the first one, of course, is academic qualification. So especially if you try to go to France through a scholarship, you need to to prove that you are very you have very high academic qualification. Uh, so you basically need to be school at good at school. The language proficiency, of course. So either it is IELTS or TOEFL, you need to to give a certificate to say that you have the B2 or C1 level. Actually, uh, for the um, for the level of English, it will depends of the field that you will choose. Let's say maybe you want to to learn uh, law in France, and so you find a a program taught in English in law. Uh, they may ask for you to have the C1 level in English because since it's a very difficult um, field, you really need to have high proficiency in English. But let's say maybe you want to study business management, then here for this kind of field, which is a little bit more easier, uh, more easy to, to learn, uh, it is okay with only a B2 level. And then, of course, you will have like to do the application process. So I'm not going to go in the details for the application process since it depends of each university and each school. But please do not forget that Campus France is actually here to help you with the application process. So if you have any question about it, please do not hesitate to contact our Campus France offices. Then to finish, well, almost finished, uh, life as an international student who does not speak, who do not speak uh, French in France. So uh, I'm I'm going to be honest with you. I'm French. Like I lived in France, of course, and I studied in France. Uh, it's still nice to know maybe some little words in, in, in French, especially like let's say you want to go to the to the bakery. You want to buy some bread like the bakery lady, I'm not sure that she will be able to understand the English. So it's good to know maybe one or two, three words to say, please give me one bread, which is, s'il vous plaît, donnez-moi un pain, which is quite easy. So you need to know about it, but uh, you don't have to worry because actually when you will be studying in France, you will easily meet French people, French students, and they will actually be more than happy to, to teach you some words. So, the first thing that you need to know is that uh, about being an international student in France is that we've got a big international student community. Actually, in France, we've got more than 400,000 uh, international students. So it's really easy to find maybe association or just some uh, classmates that are from other countries who do, those, who do not speak French too. And it will be easy to bond with them and just like to go on and make some new friends uh, in France. The second one is that you can easily join extracur extracurricular activities in English. Uh, so like I told you, um, since we've got a big international student community, a lot of them decide like to create 
some association or clubs within the university. Uh, so it can be open to French students, but also to international students who, who do not speak French. And so uh, they try to do activities in English and things like this. And even some, some French students, sometimes they open some conversation class so they can uh, teach you some French. So you really do not have to worry about this, about the French uh, language that you, don't, you may not know because it's easy to find a club that can teach you about it. Also, which is very important for you to know, is that we've got a, pre a presence of 15 PPE offices all over France. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with PPE, uh, but the PPE is actually an association of Indonesian students who are abroad and they exist in several countries. And actually we've got 15 of them in France and all over France. So it's actually a very good thing for you because when you arrive in France and you don't know how to speak French and you have so many uh, administrative process to to handle, it's very good to have those person in the PPE that will be able actually to help you to tell you how to do this and things like that. And it's also kind of a comfort for you because it's not easy to go uh, to go to the other side the other side of uh, the world to study. Uh, and then the last one is accessible cultural activities for international students. So as you may know, France is very rich. Uh, do have a very rich culture and so you can do a lot of things even though you don't speak French you can go to a museum because the description is going to be in English too or uh, you can have guide in English too and which is you can go maybe to the um, cinema too you will f easily find movies uh, sub subtitled in English or maybe in VO so it will actually be in English so you, you really don't have uh, to worry about this kind of things and which is very nice to know. Even though you're an international student, you will uh, able to have a lot of discounts. If you go to the cinema, you will have discounts. If you go to the museum, you will have discounts. If you go to the gym, you will have discounts. So that's a good thing to know about too. And uh, so actually it's almost the end of my presentation. So before uh, we start the Q&A session, I just would like to tell you that we have the European Higher Education Fair that is going to happen very soon, very soon. So first in Jakarta, the 30 October 2024. Uh, and then in Jakarta, the two and the second and third uh, day in November 2024. Uh, France actually gonna have uh, the most uh, representatives from universities and schools. Actually, a lot of business school, a lot of universities. If I remember well, we've got eight uh, business schools, uh, five engineering schools, and uh, four French universities. And actually, all of them offer programs studied in English. So it will be very great for you if you could go and meet with them and ask them the question, ask them about the requirements, ask them about the campus, about the application, about everything. Of course, Campus France is going to be there too. So please do not hesitate to come and meet with us. Uh, we will be more than happy to see you. So yeah, that's it. Here is the last uh, part of my PPT. So I was talking about the, the contact of the Campus uh, France offices. So do not hesitate to take a picture of it. We also have social media such as Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Please do not hesitate to follow us. So you will have to, the most up-to-date information about higher education in France. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Shaima. That's really clear. So we have already answered all of your questions about is there any English taught program in Sprongs and uh, about how you find the English taught programs, uh, what are the scholarship available, the cost living, as well as any other explanation about studying in France with English taught program. And I've seen here on our um, uh, chat box, there are already thousands of questions uh, that <laughs> we can answer. Uh, so we can directly go to the question session answer, Chaiman. So I will uh, maybe read several questions and then you will answer it for us. Uh, 
So the first question is about um, the level or the requirement for English thought program. So um, what are the requirements? What are, what are the kind of English proficiency tests that we use for um, English thought program? Because here, uh, the so the students ask whether we need to use TOEFL, IELTS, or TOEIC, or is there any specific uh, English uh, proficiency test for our students? And the second question is regarding the ranking. So first is about the level of rank, level of English and the certification. And the second is the ranking. Could you provide us a link about the university ranking in France so we can choose the suitable university for our fields? Maybe we can um, explain a bit about the ranking in France and what are the, uh, the international ranking and the catalog that the students can use as a reverence and as a source of information for them to find the university in France with a good quality, uh, especially for the, the for those that are taught in English. Okay, please, Chemas. Thank you, thank you, Hidaya. Thank you so much for the questions. So for the first one about the level in English, so. Um, Actually, uh, it, it the, the certification are going to be the same as in Indonesia. So the one that the universities and school are going to ask you about to ask you is uh, IELTS, TOEIC, or TOEFL. So if you have one of those three, of course they need to be uh, recent, not more than two years, and you have to to have uh, the good the the good uh, proficiency, of course, a high a high proficiency. Um, just, uh, for your information, I know that some students actually, uh, they give sometimes the Duolingo, uh, certificates. So please note that in France, we actually, most of the time, the universities and schools, they do not accept it. They don't think it's a very official certificate. So if you plan to, to go study in France in English, please try to have either the IELTS, the TOEIC or the TOEFL. So that's it for the level in English. I hope that I answered the the, the question pretty pretty clearly. Um, for the second one about the international ranking and the the French ranking. So uh, what you can do is like to try to see the the top rankings, like the top hundred rankings of um of the international rankings that I mentioned uh, earlier during the presentation. So, of course, you've got Shang Shanghai ranking. We also have the QS ranking, the Times Higher Education rankings, and uh, the finan Financial Times ranking. I think if you already look up this uh, list, you will actually find the best universities, the best French universities and French schools in these rankings. And it, it actually will help you to um, to choose the, the right uh, university or school that you would like to. But please note that since uh, they are in a very uh, high position, it means that to go in this kind of schools or university is going to be very competitive. So you need to have a very high academic qualification, to be honest. So sometimes it can be hard to go in this kind of universities and school if you don't have uh, the good profile. So once again, please, once you've got an idea of your study projects, do not hesitate to contact uh, Campus France offices. So we will be able, able to guide you a little bit about the choose the choice that you have to make uh, about the universities or school. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Chaima. It's really clear about the certification of English. What are the tests that, nor that's, um, that is accepted? for the university as well as the ranking that is um, also considered in internationally. So we move on to the next question. So I found that there are several questions that seem similar. So I'm trying to, um, to connect the question. For example, here, Chaima, we have a question about, do we need to translate the documents into French? 
And this is also the same question uh, with the recent one. Hello, my question are, do you need transcript of school report in French or in English? Uh, in French, do you have recommended Swan translator? Uh, second is student housing is guaranteed for uh, your um, first year student or need to be fine by our own? Thanks for this presentation. So the question, um, so actually this is this is already the question about the documents, whether they need to be translated in French or in English, whether we have uh, the recommended sworn translator and uh, for the housing, uh, student housing, is it warranted or we need to find it by our own for our um, uh, university? Okay, please Shema. Okay, thank you. So about the, the translation of documents, actually, if it's in English, it's quite enough. You don't need to, to translate it in French, especially if you apply for uh, an English taught programs. Actually, it's okay to have it in, in, in English. Uh, it may depend, actually, from the university and schools, but what I can guarantee you is that most of them accept the documents in English, though it needs to be in English and not in Indonesian. Of course, it's of course if it's in Indonesian, then like they can't read it, so they can really uh, know if it's a very good. If it's what kind of document is it actually? So, um, so yeah. So in English, it's quite enough. You don't have like to translate in French. About a uh, French translator, actually, I I don't really have any any recommendation in mind. Uh, but if if it happens that you have to 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 translate your document in French, then uh, maybe you can just contact us and we can try to give you some contact. But like, yeah. Uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, Shema, to, to yeah? cut you from that side. Actually, we have the Swan translator that is provided from, by French Embassy in Indonesia, and they offer the service uh, from English to French um, documents. So we have those um translation uh, translate sworn translator actually. Okay, then that's very good to know, especially if it's from the embassy. Uh, the the embassy it means that it's uh, a very good one. So that's good to know. Thank you in there. Uh, and about the accommodation students for the students. So that's a very hard question to answer because actually it will depends of where you're going, which university or school you're going to. And uh, when you're going to, so so many things to to take to 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 know about, and um, what I can tell you is that um, most of the time, for example, you go to Paris, you have to find yourself your accommodation. Actually, most of the universities and schools are going to be like this, but uh, the universities and school, most of the time they have like uh, international student services and they're here to help you to find the accommodation. So sometimes they will send, send you some guide, accommodation guide which all, with all the um, students' residency, for example, uh, res residence, sorry, or uh, maybe some uh, area where you should go find your accommodation. So you will have a lot of support to help you find these accommodations. And actually also some universities who have like big campuses, they sometimes have their own accommodation. So um, mo most of the time they will tell you about it. So maybe for example, if you go to, let me think, if you go to Ecole Polytechnique, which is in Paris, but uh, the, the outside of Paris, they have a very big campus and they have their own accommodation and they actually have uh, the own accommodation for international students. Of course, it's not for all international students since they don't have enough rooms, but um, they're still going to offer to you this accommodation and actually the first year students are going to be uh, the priority. So yeah, but if you don't find it on the campus, then uh, the school or the university is going to try to help you to find uh, a good accommodation, yeah. Okay, that's very clear about the um, documents and about the um, the um, housing in France. So if for the um, documents for you to 
apply for the university in France, we highly encourage you to contact Campus France on your um, uh, near in your uh, domicile or on your city for us to know about the requirements uh, that is asked by each universities. Okay, next we are, so next we will discuss about the scholarship because here uh, there is, after I got the LOA, a uh, private university majoring in business management, for example, I want to apply for the scholarship. Is the Delft B2 level certificate is required for French government scholarship? So actually it is the question regarding the scholarship registration, whether for the students who are accepted in English, the English taught program, they still need to, uh, to submit their French level or French proficiency test for um, the um, application. And this is also the question for the um, learning program in France, whether for English taught program, they still need to submit the French level to be accepted, or uh, maybe they will have a certain uh, support for them to learn French during the program itself, Chema. Okay, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for the first question for the French scholarships, so actually I'm not sure a hundred percent, but thanks God I've got my colleagues with you, with me, so they're gonna help me. Um, so for the France Excellence scholarships, I do believe that you don't have to show uh, a B two Delph. Because actually, uh, we are not going to see, like, we're not going to check if you can speak English or French. We're just going to check if you've got the letter of acceptation from the university or school that you apply to. If you've got the letter of acceptation, then it means that uh, all the requirements were met and that the university is ready to welcome you. So we don't really have to say anything about it. The only thing that we're going to check actually is the academic um, academic qualification. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So for the scholarship, we will um, we will not require the so the requirement for the scholarship itself. It doesn't um, ask you to give you more uh, or to give the French certificate if you are applying for the program that is taught in English. And the uh, second question, Saima, whether the English taught program, they have like a certain curriculum for them to learn French during their studies. So no, actually, if you're going to study 100% uh, in English, you don't have to show that you have any uh, language proficiency in France, in French, sorry. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's not needed. Uh, actually, what you need to know, though, is that most of the time, if you uh, decide to join a English taught programs, a fully English taught programs, then uh, most of the time they're going to ask you to, to join some French classes. But you don't have like to show before coming to France to show that you can speak French. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chaima. So the second, uh, the next, it's not the, the, the second, the next question is um, about IELTS certification. Bonjour, I want to ask if we only have IELTS certification, will our chances of being accepted to, will be the same as those who attach the and IELTS? So if the students have both, um, both um, certification, English and French, will this be a consideration for the university in accepting students? Even they say that learning session will be career carried out in full English. Thank you. Voila, Shema. Um, so wait, if, if I don't understood the question uh, right, is that if uh, the present annials are a TOEFL certificate, will there be a difference? Um, actually, the question is uh, if the student has two level, um, meaning to say that if the students, they want to apply for the English taught program, but they have uh, like French proficiency, maybe they have DELF or TCF, uh, whether it will be um, much more considered than the students who has only English or is this will give them benefit for the students for the scholarship and for the university itself? 
Okay, okay, I understand better. Thank you, Idaya. So no, actually, uh, there will not be there, there will not have any differences. So you can only give your IELTS. Uh, it, if you give your IELTS and your DELF and another student only give its IELTS, you will have the same, uh, you will have the same, um, oh God, sorry, how to say that? Uh, you, you will have the same chance to go in the, in the university or the school. Okay, so um, whether you have uh, both French and English or English, it's not like the main reason for them to to consider your application. I can say that we uh, you you still start at the same level, so it's not um it doesn't give um different level for the students who has two languages, uh, then only one language if the program is taught in English. Okay. Uh, next, it is a question about the level of study in France. It's about the system education, Chaima. Hello, what is the difference between L L1, L2, and L3? If I'd like to uh, enroll as an undergraduate student, can I choose the L2 and L3 as some university displays only from year two and above? Thank you. And the next question is to prepare for a master's degree in France. What academic requirements do I need to meet for the university admission in general? And what is the difference between M1 and M2? So uh, maybe I will highlight about the difference here, L1, L2, and L3. And for the master is M1 and M2. So for the master's degree in France, what academic requirements? Actually, we have our um, webinar that has been um, recorded and it has been uh, shared as well on YouTube about how to get the letter of acceptance by the university. And we also conclude what are the documents needed on this um, webinar. So I will share with you the link on the chat box. Uh, so the Chaima will answer the question regarding the level of study, L1, L2, L3, and M1 and N2. Please, Chaima. So yeah, so for the L1, L2, L3 uh, study, so so just for a quick explanation, L1 means that you will be in the first year of bachelor's degree, L2 the second year, and the L3 the third year. So if you already uh, are uh, in the an undergraduate student, so let's say you finish your bachelor's degree, then you can easily go in the L2 or L3 uh, years of a bachelor's degree in France. Uh, maybe let's say you in your first year of bachelor's degree and then after that you want to go to to do a bachelor's degree in France, then you can also easily go to the second year of a bachelor's degree. Though the fields are needs to be similar, of course. If they are not similar, then you have to start from the beginning. About the M1, M2, so M1 is actually the first year of a master's degree, M2 the second year of a master's degree. And if you want to do a master's degree in France for the academic requirements, we will, of course, ask for a bachelor's degree diploma. And for the bachelor's degree diploma, it needs to be related to the master's degree that you're going to take. So let's say, for example, you want to do a master's in uh, green energy. Uh, but you have a bachelor's degree in French languages, of course, you will not be able to apply to this kind of master's because it means you don't have the, you don't have like the basic, the foundation uh, knowledge about green energy. But uh, if you have like a bachelor's degree similar that similar in in this uh, in this field, then it will be uh, more easy for you to to apply to it and get in. Okay, thank you, Shaima. So there is, um, there is of course, a difference between L2, L1, and L2. And the name of the 1, 2, 3, and Master 1 and 2, it um, represents the year, actually. So uh, Lissong's uh, and Master, so yeah, it's uh, simply like that. So next, we move on to the question. It is regarding to exchange program, Shaima, because just now we uh, explained about the EISMA scholarship. Uh, do we need to be enrolled as an active student in a university to join short courses? And how long does the duration usually take? So for maybe, because it is uh, the short, like, short course, 
and how do we need to be enrolled as an active student in a university to join short course? That is why I connect it with the question with the ISMA and how long the duration uh, usually take for the short courses. Please, Chairman. Okay, thank you. So for the exchange program, for the ISMA exchange program, uh, of course, you need to be enrolled in one of the university here in Indonesia to be able to go to an, another university as an exchange student. Well, that's for ISMA. But uh, let's say you just want to do some short courses or join some short uh, programs. Uh, actually, you don't have to be enrolled in a university. You can just go by yourself and do it. And most of the time, uh, I guess the short programs is uh, no longer than three months. So it's a very short one and it's about a very specific field. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. So yes, uh, for the short course, uh, especially for ISMA, you need to be enrolled as yeah. an active student. So next, uh, this is a bit like a story. There is the narration at the bit uh, here, Chema. Hello, I am a self-taught programmer and I've been working for eight years. Currently, I've been working with French startup for three years. Here, I want to know there is a chance for me, uh, 20 years old, who have only vocational high school diploma to study in France. So this student is graduated from vocational high school. Uh, and she has been working with it uh, for uh, for three years. And mm, 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 no, it, uh, he has been, um, okay. So he, he is right now 28 years old. He graduated from vocational high school. Is there any chance for him to study in France? Uh, yeah, that will be the question, I think, uh, simply put it like that. Okay. So, um, so yes, my, my answer is yes, you, you will be able to study in France, uh, even if you, like, like, like you say, you only have the high school vocational, which is already a lot. So about the high school vocational, it will actually depends of um, which field you are studying in this high school. And depending of this field, you will be able to see if there are some schools or universities that uh, offers programs uh that can be like interesting for you and if you can like apply to them so yeah it's totally doable you just have to 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 look it up to do some research to see what can be interesting for you and see if you can apply to it okay so there's no limit for the students who can who wants to apply or want to pursue their further study in France whether you are graduated um, maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago from uh, your senior high school to continue your bachelor or your lessons or prim first year of higher education, you can still do it. So I highly recommend you to contact Campus France in your city for you to be able to, um, to plan for your progression to study in France. And I also share the link um, YouTube link for you to learn about uh, the requirement because just now we have the question about the requirement to apply for the university. The YouTube link is on the chat box. And then next, uh, we have the questions regarding uh, the degree with English thought program. Like, is there any difference of the degree that is taught in English or French program? Uh, for like a uh, bachelor, because uh, for example, in, uh, in, in, in the first year higher education, we have like bachelor uh, program in English. Uh, we call it bachelor for, Eng uh, for French, we call it lessons. Is there any difference that is taught in English or in French? And then here um, we have also the question from Al that is also related to this question. It's like, because the th English taught usually more expensive than the French taught one. Uh, do you recommend to wait till B2 so that uh, uh, B2 level so that we can enroll to a French program or apply for the scholarship because the private schools uh, the price are uh, higher than the one in um, public institution I can say. Okay. So so um so actually uh most of the time the universities uh and i'm going to talk about the the public university now uh 
uh, if they offer a program in English, most of the time they don't have it in French. It means they only have it in English and the French students, if, you want, if they want to study these programs, then they have to study it in English. But uh, we may have some universities or private schools that uh, offers the same programs in French or in English. Actually, it, actually it will be exactly the same. It will be the same, the same level, the same uh, courses, the same, uh, sometimes the same professor. So you really don't have to worry about the differences between the two. Uh, but about the prices, which is very right, is that if you go for a private school, sometimes uh, the, the French programs can be a little bit uh, cheaper than uh, the English ones. Uh, so... Uh, so actually, it will depend. I think most of the time, it's better to go if you're not like you do not know French. It's better to try to get a scholarships and then and then to apply to the to these um, English taught programs in these private schools. But if uh, you can't uh, have the scholarships, then it's good to to think about uh, public universities because about the public universities that the tuition fees are very low. And actually, what you can find in a private schools, you can also find it in public universities. So let's say you want to study, uh, I don't know, international business management, then you can, uh, you can find it, of course, in business school, which are all of them private schools, but you can also find them in public university where the tuition fees are way lower than the, the business schools ones. So yeah, you need to think about, about it like this, yeah. Okay, thank you, Chema. So there's no like a difference between English or French talk program. And for the consideration will be maybe uh, for the one, uh, whether you need to learn French first or you are uh, applying the program that is taught in English. Well, it it, it it came back to you because we are still having the scholarship that is provided for English thought program as well. So if it is, if the problem will be the the finance or the uh, finance support for your study. Okay, um, I will encourage for those who, are, who wants to ask directly. So maybe you can raise your hand so that you can ask directly to Chema. Uh, while waiting, I will be uh, uh, next asking another question regarding the visa requirement. Is the deposit required for studying in France similar to the requirement in Germany for obtaining a student visa? Meaning, uh, well, the question is about the student visa, whether we need a deposit for studying in France. Chairman. A deposit for study in France. Okay, no, we actually don't have this kind of things. Of course, you have to pay for the visa fees, which makes sense, but we don't ask for any deposits. Okay, so we do not need the deposit. Of course, there will be uh, there will be several requirements for you to get your visa, but for the registration to the university, the answer is no. So we do not need to the the deposit. We are still uh, waiting for you to want that wants to raise hand to ask directly to Chema for you who has still the question. But now I will continue to the next question. It's regarding to the cultural and language immersion and as well as the immersion for uh, professional opportunities. But um, it is highly recommended for the students that are taught uh, that are studying the uh, in English taught program to learn French. And what are the level for them to survive in France for their um, cultural uh, and language uh, immersion or experiences in France, as well as for them to be able to um, work uh, part time during their study to support their study. But uh, when we only have English, it is um, uh, enough or it is uh, it will be uh, okay for them to to, to work uh, and to yeah to emerge and immerse in their student life in France too. Okay, so um, so actually to to be able to to survive in France, it's good to have maybe just the A one level. So just, you know, to know the, the basic words that can uh, help you to, to go on with your daily life in France. Uh, 
um, so yeah, you don't have to to, to really have a, a, a high uh, proficiency. Um, but about the internships or the professional experience that you may have to 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 validate for your programs, um, actually it can be sometimes difficult for international students who do not speak French to find uh, a company. But um, most of the time, you will always have uh, opportunities in big cities such as Paris, Lyon, Bordeaux, uh, Lille, where you can easily find opportunities of internships uh, in English. So you really, uh, you, you don't really have to, to worry about it. Uh, but still, if let's say that you want to, to stay in a, in a smaller city, let's say maybe, I don't know, uh, what is this? Rennes, let's say Rennes, uh, then the, to find an internship that you may have to speak a little bit French and then say that maybe you have to validate a A1, a A2 or B1 level to be able to start an internship with them. Uh, but you have to know that uh, most of the time the university or the school is going to be here to help you find an internship uh, where you can speak in English if you really don't know French. So you don't really have to worry about it, but just so you know, you will have most of the time to go in big cities to be able to do this internship. Um, and then uh, for for the other question, so we have the, the internship and the cultural immersion, I think. So yes, for the cultural immersion, uh, A1 is very enough. And then you will see once you are in France, you will be able like to practice with everyone. And then uh, day by day, your French is going to get better. So yeah, that's why I, I recommend to you just to know the A1 level, not even the A1 level, just the basic actually, uh, the basic words. Yeah. Okay, merci beaucoup. Thank you, Chema. So because we have this question where the, the integration to professional and uh do we, uh how will will I miss something if I don't speak French in France? Whether it is highly recommended for the students to really learn French before they study in France. Okay, we have L that raised their hands right now. Um L, uh please uh, you can uh okay, right now L is no longer with us. Okay, uh L. Uh, okay, still, Al, uh, please um, open the audio for us to, to know your question. Hello, can I ask? Okay, so I just want to ask about how likely it is for like public university in France to accept the cross field between different, uh, like different fields from bachelor degree to master degree, because because I know in France there is a possibility doing the M, on the M one and M two difference, but sometimes it is like before like because I want to apply for my my master degree, but it is kind of different from my bachelor. So how how is it in France? Like how? How likely you are getting approved by like public university? Okay, please, Chairman. So actually, um, it will depends of the field that you want to study in. When it comes to technical fields such as uh, sciences, engineering, you need to have some some foundation knowledge or basic skills to be able to go to the master's degree. But let's say maybe you you want to study in in uh, social sciences. I think it will be easier to get like to have a different field in bachelor's degree and go for uh, another field in master's degree. But actually, it will be um, how to say that it will be like it it will depend of uh, the universities and the field that you will be studying. Like maybe do you have in mind uh, the fields that you want to study in France and what did you study in bachelor's degree? Oh Hello. yeah, so yeah, so I'm studying design in my bachelor, and I want to take like business or management. So I think it's still possible, but I'm kind of afraid to apply to the public university because of like the I need to reason with my pivot. Yeah, actually, it's to me it's uh it's 
it's not going to be a problem since it's business management. Yeah. I think you can go from design to business management without any problem. The only thing that they're going to ask you is about the English proficiency. Yeah. Okay. Okay, El, do you still have the uh, do you have still have another question? Is it already clear for you? Okay. El is no longer um maybe uh, the problem with the connection. So this will be uh, the last uh, question Chaima regarding the program that is Taught in English. Uh, oh, okay. I cannot unmute, so I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Do you have? Do you still have another question? No, no, no. It's like clear. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. So this will be like a different. Uh, this is will be the last question about. Uh, because here I've got the question about Campus France. Can Campus France um uh, accompany me? for the application for English Start program? Or uh, Campus France only uh, available to uh, accompany the students who want to apply for a uh, French Start program? So actually, Campus France is available for everyone who want to study in France. Either it is in English, either it is in France, either it is in Japanese. We're here to help you. If you go as as long as you go to France, actually, we're gonna help you. So yeah, the the re the answer is yes. Okay, thank you, Chema. I think that will be our last question regarding studying in France. Maybe Chema, the last statement for the students who are still wondering or still questioning whether they can apply to study in France, like the 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 the. A simple statement that will conclude our session today. Um, like the, the, okay, the the only thing that I want to tell you is that it's okay if you don't speak French, you can easily go to France and study in English. It will not be a problem. So please do it. Do not hesitate just because you don't speak French. Okay, so don't hesitate whether you have French or you don't have. French, whether you speak uh, English or um, you will learn or you will study both in French and English thought program, you still have the, uh, the opportunity or the same opportunity for you to apply for the university and to get a scholarship to study in France. I'll, I will invite for all of the students to activate your camera for us to be able to take a picture together. Um, boleh diaktifin dulu kameranya supaya kita bisa foto bareng sebelum kita akhiri sesi ini. Um, and here we have Mbak Gabriela as Kampus Rang Surabaya and Mas Agung from Kampus Rang Jogja and Mbak Fitria from Kampus Rang uh, Jakarta. Uh, this is the face of Kampus Rang in your area that will help you throughout your university or your journey to study in France uh, with English thought program or French thought program, of course. So maybe I will invite again for all of those of you who are available to activate your camera so that we can take a picture together. Okay, we have already several uh, students. So I will take a picture, uh, only several of you that activate your camera, thank you. So. I will count to three. One, two, three. Okay, thank you very much. Um, again, thank you very much for all those of you who has been participating in our session today. Thank you very much, Chaima Nedat, our coordinator of Campus France thank Indonesia, you. as well as our keynote speaker that has explained us about the opportunity to study in France with English Start Program, as well as the scholarship and how to apply for the university and how do we live in France with um, English Start Program and how do we work there. It's really clear right now and I hope that we will receiving your um, message after this for consultation, of course, for your preparation to study in France. Again, I will remind you, uh, I will remind you, don't hesitate to contact Campus France for your preparation to study in France with English uh, level or English certification, because uh, with English, you still have the opportunity 
to pursue your study in one of the best university in France. Thank you very much. I am Hidaya as the person in charge of Campus France Medan, as well as the host for today's session. Again, um, say thank you for all your participation. And I say, bon weekend, have a great weekend for all of you. Au revoir à tous. Au revoir, thank you.